Hi guys, long time no talk, but today <laughs> This is my new kitty Um, so far he is unnamed I have like five names in my cat name rotation right now But I'm so indecisive and I cannot for the life of me choose a name Um, so He's just cat But since this is my first video of 2024 I wanted to make a video And I didn't want to make a video solely just talking about that because that would be kind of boring. So I have my <laughs> perfume collection here. And I thought that I would show you guys my perfumes and also talk about the movies and the songs that I liked in 2023. This isn't going to be like a full media wrapped because this video is very last minute and not thought out whatsoever. So I only have my Spotify wrapped and then the movies that I really, really enjoyed for 2023 that um, I just looked through on my letterbox. Anyways, my biggest perfumes. You guys have probably definitely seen this one. This is the Strawberry Pound Cake Perfume from Bath and Body Works. So I think I'll start with music, um, just because I can go on and on about movies and I don't want to talk about movies for an hour and then be like, oh my god, I ran out of time. So my top songs on my Spotify wrapped, and this is completely from like the top of my mind because I have not seen my wrapped in so long, um, but I think the fifth one is Runaway by Kanye West, um, which is kind of surprising because I only knew of this song from this year and I didn't think I listened to it that much, but I guess I did. And then the fourth one is Street Lights by Kanye West, which is another surprising one because I, I discovered this song like recently. Like, oh, my chair is so squeaky. Dude, if any gaming chair companies want to sponsor me, please, I'm begging. Oh my god, I need a new chair so bad. Look, these are like claw marks from when I had Kiwi. And if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, Kiwi is with my sister who moved out. So she took Kiwi when she left. So I don't have Kiwi anymore. So that's why um, she's not here and why I have a new kitty. But yeah, Street Lights was a surprising one because I discovered that song like quarter four of 2023. Quarter three, quarter four. So yeah, I was like, And then the third song was Tolerate It by Taylor Swift. It's not one of my favorite Taylor Swift songs, but it's like, it's fun to sing, I guess, and to listen to. Because when I went to the Eras tour, I was the only one standing and like singing along to Tolerate It. Like everyone in my um, section, they took it as like, a seating song so everyone sat down and just like watched the visuals which is completely fine but I was like standing and screaming and like ugh, ever since then I just love the song and then the second song on my Spotify wrapped was Cool About It by Boy Genius um, I love Boy Genius I love Phoebe Bridgers I think Cool About It might be one of their most popular songs but it's only on my rap because it was the first song I discovered from Boy Genius. Sorry if he's distracting. <laughs> and like, he's not comfortable with me holding him at all yet, so that's why I can't like hold him and show you guys. Um, anyways. Also, I'm medicated. <laughs> so that's like, I think one of the reasons why I'm filming all of a sudden. Um, I have really bad ADHD and it's only just now being treated. Um, so that is kind of why videos have sort of been lacking, um, but what was I saying? Um, okay, I don't know, cool about it. <laughs> I guess I've said everything I need to say about that. Okay, and the first song, drum roll. Shit, I don't even know it. Ceilings by Lizzie McAlpine, I think that's her name. Um, that 
was the most surprising one yet because I didn't realize I listened to it that much. It was one of those songs that I like looped really, really intensely like in the beginning of the year and then I completely forgot about it. So, let's see when this gets on. Yeah, my Spotify rep is going through it. And then my top artist, I don't really remember it, like, at all. I know the first one is Taylor Swift. The second one, Phoebe Bridgers. Third, Blade. Fourth, Radiohead. Either Radiohead or Deftones, I can't remember. Or that's my fifth. Or no, fifth is Olivia Rodrigo. Only because I looped her new album, like, religiously. It was so good, but... And I don't listen to music, like, at all. Um, I, I mean, like, I love listening to music, but I love listening to music that I already know. Like, I don't like discovering... I just, like, inhaled that. I don't like discovering, like, new music. Because when I listen to new music, I'm like, I don't know the song. I can't sing along to it. Skip. So, yeah. This is my Victoria's Secret bare vanilla scents. I love vanilla scents and like gourmand vanilla. Like I love smelling like a sugar cookie every single time. Okay, now that I'm thinking about it, the fourth artist was definitely Radiohead, not Deftones. So it's Taylor Swift, Phoebe Bridgers, Blade, Radiohead. his first introduction to ASMR, so he has no idea what's going on. Oh, look at my nails. Do you guys like them? I love, love, love them. They're so cute. So yeah, that was my Spotify wrapped. And then for the little, like, specialized little thingy, I got Time Traveler because I love listening to songs that I already know. Um, all of my playlists, they're songs from different playlists that I've already had, and like one or two occasional songs from like the Discover Weekly, but I rarely ever listen to Discover Weekly because I hate discovering music. I love sticking with what I already know. Um, I don't know what that says about me, but yeah. Okay, this next set. This one is Sweet Tooth by Sabrina Carpenter. This one's a body mist and it's Caramel Dream. So it's like her, oh, I was gonna show it, but that was gonna be a spoiler. But it's like her, um, it's just a vanilla scent, but also with caramel, which makes this one different from her other one. Um, yeah. Anyways, that is my Spotify wrapped and now I'm going to be doing movies and I'm not going to do like rankings? I don't know yet because it's really hard for me to like rank movies because like I understand how hard it is to make movies and how different each one can be and how subjective it is and I can think that a movie is like really really great technically but I, I probably like didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed another movie that probably didn't have that much to the story or to the plot or to the acting, dialogue, writing, anything like that. So it's all really subjective and I don't like ranking it like that, but obviously my first movie, Barbie. And before anyone is like, oh, of course you like Barbie, blah, blah, I am a Greta Gerwig fan. I am a stan. I'm a ride or die. I'm a hardcore Greta Gerwig fan. Like, love Lady Bird. Lady Bird is my fucking favorite movie ever. So when it was first announced that she was going to write Barbie, I was like, yes, like, hello, yes. So I've been keeping up with Barbie for like a year before it was ever released. Um, so obviously, and I'm Pink Matter, like I love the color pink. So it was just the perfect movie for me. one of those movies that I loved seeing people's first time reactions to. 
I saw Barbie five times in theaters with, and I think it was like three or four different people, but like what I said earlier, like obviously if you're gonna compare it to Oppenheimer, obviously I know Oppenheimer is so, so much better than Barbie. So much more technically better, so much better writing, so much more thought that went into it, but I don't know, I just love Barbie and I think the thing is with Oppenheimer, um, I love that movie so much and I'm like, I cannot stop thinking about it every single day. Like, Oppenheimer is just one of those movies that were just so, so great. But to me, I have really bad, like, audio processing. I don't know what it's, like, called, but when people are, like, talking for a really long time or there's, like, a conversation that's happening, I'm always zoning out or, like, I can't understand what they're saying. Like, I know that they're saying words and, like, talking in English, but, like, it doesn't make sense to me whatsoever. And Oppenheimer is one of those movies where I was like, I have no idea what's going on. But, oh my god, the visuals were amazing. Christopher Nolan's directing was so good. Killian Murphy was amazing. Um, and I really think Oppenheimer can win Best Picture at the Oscars. If not, poor things. I'll get into that later, but yeah, um, Oppenheimer was just so great, but when I compare it to Barbie in my brain, I enjoyed Barbie so, so, so much more, so, um, next one, <laughs> now I have the Sol de Janeiro Body Mist, I think, Perfume Mist, this one is number 40, it has black, amber, plum, and vanilla woods, This was one of those scents that I just like randomly got because I like the color, but also because I don't really like like fruity scents. Um, I love vanilla scents, so this was, yeah. But like, and the thing is like, it's okay. It's an okay scent for me, but that's solely because I, I'm not used to fruity scents. Another movie that I really, really enjoyed was Poor Things. That was... If not Barbie, I think Poor Things would be my number one movie. I don't even think Barbie's my number one movie. It was just my most favorite watch. My favorite first time watch, especially. Um, but it's also just such a fun, lighthearted watch. But it's also so sentimental, so heartwarming. Um, Barbie was really good. But Poor Things, just overall, so, so great. So good. Poor Things was also one of those movies that I picked up on really, really early on um, and stuck with before it was ever even released. Um, I like, I knew that it was going to be just a Best Picture nominee, if not winner. With Poor Things, I also did have trouble processing the dialogue, but it wasn't like, a, it wasn't difficult dialogue to understand, which made it a little bit easier. But there was a lot of dialogue in it. And so many people, so many old people walked out of it, like, halfway during the movie. Um, they're lost, but I get why. But Emma Stone was... I was trying to remember which Emma was. Emma Stone's brilliant in it. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. All the side characters, it really felt like they had some sort of purpose being in the movie. The cinematography was amazing. Set design was fantastic. Chef's Kiss, such a good movie. Another movie I really enjoyed, I actually watched this one in 2024, but it was Iron Claw. I'm so sick of spraying because I can just smell it, it's wafting in the room, but... I have another Sol de Janeiro scent. This one is 71. This one is caramelized vanilla and macadamia. Um, God, what was I saying? Iron Claw. I watched this in 2024. I didn't cry personally because I don't understand brotherhood or like competitiveness with their brothers. Um, even though these stories were so sad and the fact that it's based on a true story and the fact that they had to remove a brother just so it wasn't more sad. Oh my God. Um, yeah, Iron Claw was just so good. I really feel like that's a movie that anyone can enjoy. Um, so, if you need a movie to watch and if it's still 
in theaters. I don't know if it is. It should be. Watch Iron Claw. Okay. The next scent I have. This one is Pumpkin Praline Pancakes. This one. It smells like bread. Like yeasty bread. Like sweet bread. But anyways. The next movie that I want to talk about is Past Lives. Oh my god. Past Lives. I watched that early 2023. And it's one of those movies that I have not stopped thinking about ever. Ever, ever, ever. Oh my god. Everything about it was just so, 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 so good. And I'll see like clips of it, I'll see edits of it with like sad songs in the background and I'll never not sit down and watch the entire thing or like feel it in my heart. It was just so real, so domestic, so gut-wrenching, so good. I really feel like it's so overlooked in award season right now um, with like Oppenheimer, Barbie, poor things. I feel like it's so overlooked just because how of how quiet and simple it is, but I don't think anyone understands how raw and true it is, and it's so, so, so good. Oh my god, the actors were amazing. Celine Song, thank you for your service. Anyways. This one is Snuggle Weather, which is also another fragrance mist from the same company. This one smells like, this one's description was like, it smells like fall, which, whatever the hell that means, I don't know. I could not tell you what this smells like. I'm really bad with describing scents. It smells like fall, I guess. Okay, my next movie I want to talk about. This one should have been a lot higher on the list, but Across the Spider-Verse, oh my god. I'm not like a big superhero, villain, powers type of person, movie, movie watcher person at all. Um, I don't like, like, when movies have a lot going on or when there's like villains that ruin the entire story. I feel like the plot is always sort of the same, but Across the Spider-Verse, how could I not mention it? The animation was so great. The visuals, the editing, the sound editing, everything was just so amazing. I think that was like one of the first movies of 2023 that I watched by myself. And that like opened my mind. I was like, oh my god, I need to see more movies. Why am I not like going to the movie theaters? And then I bought a subscription pass to the theaters and now I go like every single weekend by myself. But Across the Spider-Verse was so good. I'm so excited for the next one. I know everyone's like, Across the Spider-Verse isn't that great because it was only a part one and it was setting up for part two and part two is gonna be so much better. Who cares? <laughs> Across the Spider-Verse was great. It, the visuals were so great. Like, I thought everything was so, so good. I was kind of expecting for like a big, big fight, which I guess like didn't happen because it was part one. But like, I don't care. Like, it was still good. I still gave it five stars. This next one is Vanilla Skin by Fleur. Oh, that sounds good. Wow. Um, yeah, good movie. Um, and I really think people only don't talk about it as much is because it's an animated movie, which sucks so bad because animation is cinema. And animation should really be in discussion when we're talking about like best picture or like just movies in general. But I also hate animation movies because the year Guillermo del Toro said that he his Pinocchio won over Marcel the Shell in the Oscars and that pissed me off. What? Marcel the Shell, one of the best movies ever deserved the Oscar. Anyways, he was robbed. He was robbed. Anyways, anyways, anyways. Oh my god, what was I saying? Um, okay, my next movie. I'm debating between two. Killers of the Flower Moon. That was oh, 
such a good movie. Such a good movie. I saw that by myself in theaters also. It was like a random Thursday afternoon. There was like three other old people in the theater with me. But I was so hooked the entire way through. I think, I want to say it was a three hour movie, but I don't think so. Because I don't remember anyone talking about it like that. Because with Oppenheimer, everyone was like, three hour movie, blah blah, but it didn't feel that long. But I think in my letterbox review, I did write that the Osage consultant talking about how Martin Scorsese had like a really limited knowledge on the subject simply because he is a white man. So it's difficult for him to talk about the stories of the Osage when he doesn't really understand it himself which I get that he gets, which is why he ended his movie in that way, if you've watched it, but yeah, it's just something to think about, but yeah, overall, I loved it. Lily Gladstone, I'm so, so glad that she's getting her flowers this year because she deserves it so, so much, and I'm glad that she's been overshadowing Leonardo DiCaprio this entire award season. Like, I don't even remember that he was in the movie, it's all about Lily Gladstone. Okay, now the next movie that I really, really liked. At this point, this isn't even a wrap. I'm just talking about movies that I enjoyed in 2023. Like I said, I can go on for hours. I love talking about movies, but the next movie is The Holdovers. Wow. The Holdovers, visually, so amazing. It was Again, I'm not researching this topic. I can't remember anything. I think it was supposed to be like set in the 90s, somewhere around that time. And it definitely felt like that. It felt like an old timey movie. And it was so comforting, so cozy. Best Christmas movie ever. Um, I think it was one of the only Christmas movies I saw during Christmas, which is weird. Um, <laughs> storage and then the garbage truck came and I was sitting here for 10 minutes with my thoughts just waiting for everything to pass so completely forgotten what we have talked about next perfume I have this perfume which I'm trying to find the name for but I think it's just soft it just says soft on it that's the only word I can read um, this one smells like It smells kind of citrusy and like a floral sense, like a sweet floral. Yeah, I smell like a little bit of like citrus, lemony, orangey. It's nice. You know how I sprayed a bunch in the cap? I forgot that when you spray liquid, it's liquid in a cap, so I kind of dumped it on my sweats. What can you do? Oh my god, I also really enjoyed the Super Mario Brothers movie that I saw in theaters and I can't remember like anything about it whatsoever but I remember really really enjoying it at the time so that's also an honorable mention but yeah I'm really bad with like remembering things off the top of my head um and it sucks because my phone is recording everything so I can't like just go and check my letterbox see what movies I really like this year because um, I have to set up the camera and everything again and that's annoying but this one does not have a name this one is just this um, but it smells sweet it smells like oh it smells like condensed milk I think that's what like the description of it was when I saw it it was like it's like a like a like I'm- oh god, my brain is like fried. Yeah, it just smells exactly like condensed milk if it was in a perfume. Bottle. Spray. Formula. 
but yeah, those are the movies that I can think about right now. Okay, this next perfume is Choco Musk. This one smells like chocolate. I like this. I really, really love gourmand scents, especially like sweet candy or um, like pastries. Oh my god. So those are my favorite movies. Um, again, I'm so bad at remembering movies. I'm probably gonna like look back at my notes app and be like, oh my god, I completely forgot that movie. And I'm gonna be so mad at myself. I'm like a spiral into madness. But yeah, if I can't remember it, maybe it wasn't that good of a movie. Who knows? I'm so excited for Oscars too. That was one of the main reasons why this video was so last minute and like rushed is because I want to get it out before the Oscars um, because I, w I wanted to talk about like my best picture winners, contenders um, before it happens and I really do believe Oppenheimer will win best picture um, I'm usually really good at uh, calling the best pictures I called everything everywhere all at once I called Parasite, I called Coda I call it the shape of water too, but yeah, I have completely lost my train of thought. Can't remember the last thing I just talked about. Next perfume. This one is going to be my last one, and then we are signing off. But this one is Glossier U. This scent, I don't even think I like this scent, <laughs> like, at all, but it's pretty. And, I mean, it's... It smells fine. It smells okay, <laughs> but it's not like I don't reach for this ever. I reach for Oh my god It's not the last scent. Okay, my last scent that I forgot to talk about this is Sweet Tooth by Sabrina Carpenter Which was the same perfume as the caramel one, but without caramel And I like this one a lot better. This is the one that I always always reach for. It just smells like a lot cleaner, a lot sweeter, and it's, it's just like, it's not one of those perfumes where you have to like pair it with something because it smells so good on its own, but yeah. Um, anyways, that is my perfume collection and my 2023 media wrapped. Um, hopefully I made some sense throughout this. Hopefully it was coherent, 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 um, and hopefully someone out there enjoyed this video. I don't know if me rambling is something people particularly enjoy. I don't even enjoy it. I just do it because it's the only thing I know how to do. And, um, sorry that I never know what I'm talking about. Um, nothing. Oh my god, that actually sounds hollow. But, um, that is my video, and that is all I have to say for today. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. I feel like I've been saying the same exact thing for like five minutes. Yeah, anyways, goodbye. Um, this little guy says bye to you.